Pipe, The Long Show. This is Heart of the Matter from Salt Lake City, Utah. I am your host, Sean McCraney. Let's begin with a word of prayer because we all need it. Father, I lift up our viewing audience. I lift up Kathy Maggie, who's producing this and getting it ready for our viewers. And and uh, just uh, pray that your spirit will be with us and help us to understand the concepts that are going to be discussed and uh, give us enlightenment and help the things that are not true, that are not applicable or of you to be forgotten and that your uh, truth, your wisdom, your spirit will remain in Christ Jesus, our Lord and Savior. Amen. I talk about this a lot. I can't help it because I think that there is a need and yet people cannot fully let go of what I am hoping that we'll let go of. I'm, I'm hoping we can get ourselves free uh, that Christians and Catholics and Mormons love to talk about, and that is Satan as a force operating in our world today. I mean, it is so intrinsic to Christianity in every sense, and then I, I'm assuming it's 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 important to Islam and Judaism. But you know that that being that that impish angel that fell, Satan, and assigning him like Flip Wilson did that the devil made us do it. I am believing that we can use the Bible to show he is over, and in order to do that, we need to just walk through what he is and what he's been. Now, I'm talking about this about the third time this past year because so many people insist on believing that he is working in their lives to the negative. They say he's evil and that because of him, the world is full of sin and watch out for the Antichrist, they talk about. And we have to war against Satan. If you turn on any radio state Christian radio station and listen to a preacher he'll talk about Satan and our need to resist the wiles of the devil the fiery darts that send us to hell forever if we don't resist them and they talk about him having command over the earth and that when people die them going into his clutches in hell and burning but the scripture is clear folks clear that Jesus had the victory over sin, death, the grave, and Satan. And if you'll accept this, and that he was long ago cast into the lake of fire after that victory was consummated at Jesus' ultimate return. Let's work through Satan really quickly in his role and get rid of him. Get rid of him and talk about what remains. And that's what we're calling this show tonight, The Remains of the Day. In the Garden of Eden, Satan had zero power. Zero. On earth, no authority, no ability except to lie and to try to tempt. And uh, that newly formed couple, Adam and Eve, once he got them to disobey God and God's law, don't eat of that fruit of that tree. Once he got them to disobey God's law, this angel of light presumably took hold of this world and he reigned over it. How did he reign over it? He reigned over it because men and women were now born into the world, not the way God created Adam, breathing into the clay and him becoming a living soul, the three-part Bought Sark, Sark, Suke, and Numa. No, he became spiritually dead. He died spiritually. And so Adam, he's dead. And all the progeny coming from Adam and Eve are born spiritually dead. And who's reigning over them? Satan. He's reigning over their mind, will, and emotion. He's reigning over their body. He's, he's afflicting them with disease. As we read in Job, he's, 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 he's causing things to happen to them as they continue to live in his reign. And most importantly, in that age, he captured them when they died. He separated them forever and ever from God. And they died and they went to what we call she uh, hell, Sheol, the covered place. And some went to prison and the faithful went to paradise. But everybody separated and that's Satan's reign. He had the victory. He was over all of that, right? So he gets them to obey and people were captive imprisoned as a result. When God then instituted the law through Moses, Satan 
by and through the law became even more empowered. Why can we say that? Because for by the law is the knowledge of sin. And so his role was enhanced. It was actually amplified in the presence of the law that God gave. The law was perfect, but human beings weren't. And Satan became fortified as the accuser of the brethren. How could you accuse somebody if there's no law? But when God gave Moses the law, there were now laws, and Satan could say they're not doing it. He became an accuser. Jesus shows up, the last Adam, as Paul calls him, and he comes and he defeats Satan at every turn. He defeats him in the wilderness. He defeats him in the garden. He defeats him on the cross. He defeats him in the grave. And his ultimate defeat was at that resurrection, and Satan was bound for a season is what the scripture says. And then it says he would be loosed upon them like a roaring lion, knowing that his time was short. All of this happened before Jesus returned to take his bride in that day. And so, uh, and people will go, what about the millennium? And there's answers to that. I'm not going to cover it tonight, but just hear me. Jesus had the victory and then Satan was bound for a season. The millennium is not a literal 1,000 years. And after that time, he was let loose to actually wage war on that bride, that, that Christian, nascent Christian church uh, through the Roman army and through Judaizers and everything else coming upon it. And Satan is looking at who can, he can destroy. At Jesus' return, Paul and John and Peter wrote that this would be the end of all things relative to that former age. And then Satan and the Antichrist, who was Nero, clearly Nero, and the beast would have all been beaten and defeated by Jesus, and all material religion would have been shaken to nothing, as Hebrews 12 says, so that the only thing remaining would be unshakable on this earth relative to the kingdom of God. Unshakable. And, and that means that anything that could be moved would be removed from the kingdom. So can you move brick and mortar churches? You certainly can. Can you move the morality of men and women? You certainly can. Can you move the finances of a church? Of course you can. You can move anything like that. The church, the religion, the body of Christ is spiritual now. The kingdom of heaven is within you. And that is how we know him. And God writes his laws upon our hearts and our minds. That's his New Testament. It's not a collection of books. And so he writes his laws upon our hearts and our minds. And he says, no one will say, no, the Lord, no, the Lord. We don't need that because he is our God and our King. And the faith moved from being objectively law-driven to subjectively and spiritually understood through the heart and minds of those who are God's. All because Jesus had the consummate victory over sin, death, hell, the grave, and Satan once and for all. Jesus then, according to John, would leave once he did this and all power and authority was given to him, he would then leave the right hand of the father and he would assume the throne in my estimation. And God would become all and all that God was fully now in the resurrected body of the one Lord sitting on the throne, right? And in and through him, the whole world, because of that victory now that we read about in scripture and as a foregone conclusion, the whole world enters into a Garden of Eden state like where it began. And every person is there to decide, I'm going to believe in God or, and I'm going to seek God and his voice to walk in the cool of the day of the garden of my life, or I am going to choose the tree of knowledge and I am going to go against him and I'm going to live according to my own will. And that's where we land. That's where we stand today as the human race. What was Eden like before Satan? It was good. Eden was good. And the choice to, to do and act was all in the hands of Adam and Eve. 
God told Adam to name the animals. He had the capacity to do that. He gave them instructions. They had the ability to do that. And if they didn't understand something, they had an open relationship with God where they could have said, what does this mean when you say multiply and replenish the earth? We don't even understand that. And he would have said, well, look at the animals. What are they doing? And they could have said, okay, oh, we get it now. We can do this too. And we can multiply. They could have been in relationship with God directly, right? They chose evil before they were evil, folks. Eve chose to go against God before she fell. Do you understand that? Satan had no capacity to cause her and, 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 and influence her and move into her and make her evil. All right? She had the capacity as a created human being in God's image to choose to eat that fruit without him being able to uh, do anything within her. Right? And, uh, and that's key to remember. They had the capacity to do wrong before they fell. They chose to eat it and then the world fell and they fell, right? And then we find ourselves roiling in the state. But, but prior to them eating of the fruit, they were good. God called them good. And they ate of the fruit and fell. But prior to that, they made the decision to eat of that fruit before they fell. That shows that we all have the capacity to choose to do the will of God, uh, to choose self, to choose darkness, to choose rebellion over him and his light. And that's what Adam and Eve chose. Satan, he had no ability to move them to do it. And that is the state of the world ever since Jesus has had the victory over sin and death. Just like Adam and Eve, every single person, it's all been resolved. It's all fulfilled. And, 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 and the one God sits on his throne and the lamb is emblematic of the, the, the one that gave his life. And the one God is there ruling and reigning over a fulfilled kingdom. And every single individual is now responsible on how they choose to live. Some people choose to live by their own will. They die and they have escaped Satan's grip and hell and afterlife punishment because the price has been paid. They don't enter the kingdom. They're not God's, but they are God as in they're not his, uh, but they, uh, they're not going to receive punishment or captivity or being thrown into hell anymore because Jesus has had the victory. Ever since he had that complete victory, all of us, every human being in the world, every individual are directly responsible before the one true living God sitting on the throne for the choices we make in our life. He is calling to all. He is drawing all. His spirit is available to all. He sends the sun and the rain upon the just and the unjust. And everybody, having had the path cleared for them by Jesus, is now responsible for if they want to hear, if they want to receive, if they want to believe, or if they want to follow after their own course, just like Adam and Eve did without Christ in us. None of us have the ability or capacity to overcome our love for the dark. And we will, loving the dark more than the light, choose to abide in it rather than in the light that he offers. So, this is a summary of existence since Jesus has had the victory over everything. What do you love and seek and want most in your life? That's all a matter of every person's heart. And every person will be judged accordingly by the living God. I gave you every opportunity. I gave you every signal. Every, every, you are without excuse, as, as Paul says in Romans. It's there before you. What did you want? Choose you this day whom you will serve. Most of the world chooses to serve dark, chooses to serve evil. Whatever it is, you can have it. God who is love will give it to you. 
Those who want the truth, the light, want genuine love, want liberty from sin and lies and the ways of this world, it's there for the taking. Those who love the dark, love the self, love evil, love this world, love lies, love deception, it's here for the making and the taking. On your own accord, you're responsible. So let me sort of summarize using my hands what I think exists. We have a time. Uh, and, and it was a space and time when Jesus came and had the victory over all things. And that space and time is recorded in what we call the New Testament, which is really not the New Testament, right? The New Testament is when God writes on the laws and his laws on the hearts and minds of others. But men call that the New Testament, right? It's a record of God's victory over all things. That victory over sin, death, hell, Satan, the grave, covers all of humanity going backward and forward, beginning to end. That is done. Got that? Okay. People now choose on a different spectrum. They choose either God or they choose self. Okay. Over here, we have light. We have love. We have liberty. We have true abundant living. We have fire and glory of the all-consuming God. We have his kingdom. As you move away from that, you get darker and darker and you have the absence of God. You have the absence of light, the absence of love, the absence of liberty, the absence of real abundant living, the absence of his glory and his fire. And you are further and further away from the kingdom of God that dwells within you. Every single person's on that continuum. Somewhere in that continuum, the ultimate light to the ultimate darkness, all of us now exist. Forget about the whole Satan thing. All right? God is all in all. You can be in the heart of that, in the light of it, the love of it, the liberty of it, or you can move from him in the absence of God and be in darkness and everything that comes with that. Since the beginning, the whole structure has been about God and light and love and liberty and living versus the absence of God and therefore a absence of light and love and liberty. Remember Genesis. Just, just go back. It's just the, one of the first things we read. Listen to one of the first things we read in the Bible. And the earth was without form and void and darkness was upon the face of the deep, okay? And the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters, and God said, let there be light, and there was light. We go from the creation of there being darkness in the abyss and of the deep, and God saying, let there be light, and there is light. And we have the two eternal principles of all existence, light and dark. And every one of us are choosing daily which one we want to abide in, with dark being simply the absence of God or light. Remember what John says in John, uh, for, in John chapter 1? In him, talking about Jesus, was life, and the life was the light of men. And the light shined in the darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. It's light and it's dark. That's what, it's, it's everything. Forget Satan. Forget all of it. It's, it's you choosing, you wanting, your loving, light or dark. Truth, obfuscation. God, self. Liberty, bondage. All those principles all through scripture. Remember what Jesus said in Luke eleven thirty three: No man, when he has lighted a candle, putteth it in a secret place, neither under a bushel, but on a candlestick that they may come in, that they which come in may see the light. The light of the body is the eye. Therefore, when thine eye is single, meaning it is focused on God, the whole body is full of light. But when your eye is evil, the body is also full of darkness. Think about that. 
You have an eye single to the glory of God. You're looking for God and you're trying to do what God's will is and your body is full of his light. But if you have an eye that looks for reasons to go against God, to, to war with people, to cause pain and, and misery and suffering and, and to lie and deceive and serve yourself, that eye has no focus on God and is full of darkness. And that's why Jesus says the light of the body is the eye. It's, and, and the eye being, what are you looking for? What are you seeking for? What do you look to and want in your life? Take heed, therefore, he says, uh, but when your eye is evil, the body is also full of darkness. Take heed, therefore, that the light which is in you be not darkness. That is such a, a paradoxical a line there. And we've talked about it in other places. I'm not going to take the time now. But he says, be careful that the light which is in you not be darkness. It's just like Metallica sings. It's a light that never warms. It's a light that does not bring any heat and warm us. It's a false light. It's a different kind of light. If the whole body therefore be full of light, having no dark part, Jesus says, the whole shall be full of light as when the bright shining of a candle does give her light. Scripture talks about a few things that blind and bring darkness. Satan was one of them, for sure, a true biblical character. This is not calling him a fiction. It's just he's done. Another thing that brings darkness is ignorance. Scripture talks about ignorance. Hearts that desire uh, uh, evil are also considered reasons for darkness within us. Everything, my friends, is now a war between light and dark. And that's why the cosmos is divided up by light and dark. It's even, it's even shown to us daily in the rising and setting of the sun that we have a part of our life in darkness and part of our uh, life in light. You want to hear something really simple? I propose this. The product of the absence of God, the result of the absence of God is evil. And the product of the presence of God is life. So you take God in the fullness of God, you have pure life, love, liberty, everything good. You remove God more and more from your presence and you have evil. And you know, it's the old trick. God is totally life, L-I-F-E, living, L-I, or to live, L-I-V-E. And you flip that around and that spells evil. E-V-I-L, the absence of God. To live or evil. They're the same word except reversed. I don't know if that's by mistake or if it's on purpose. I don't know the etymology of, of evil and life and, and, uh, live and when they came from, live and where it came from, but, but they flip. So full God is full live, full L-I-V-E. Uh, full darkness is evil. E-V-I-L, the opposite, right? So it's simple as that. Evil is represented as the opposite of life and living and light. Light is what we want. Evil is represented by darkness, by death, non-life, imprisonment. Life is represented by liberty and love. All of the good things are of God. He is none of the evil. So in the end, know this. The biblical idea of an impish angel that was influenced by the dark and empowered by the dark uh, is fulfilled, over, beaten, gone. Stop talking about him. Stop blaming him. Uh, you are the one who does evil. You're responsible for it. There's no one to, to point at and, and, and there's nobody to fear in the future. He's not going to take you captive. He's not going to hold you in a prison that Jesus opened the prison doors of. He's gone. You are going to create your own prison. You're going to create your own destination by the choices you make. People don't want to hear it, so they focus on this other guy. Satan made me do it. Not anymore. James says, no, you are drawn away of your own lust. 
and you're, uh, you are responsible for the things that you do, it is because you choose either light or dark and to operate by those things. Remember, Jesus said that he is the way, the truth, and the life, right? Remember that he is the one who brings us out of that darkness. Remember, send us your email with your name, state, or uh, country in which you live so that you can participate with us in what we hope will be a refuge of light, a refuge of love, a refuge of truth, a refuge of goodness here in this world. It's not something that will save you. It's not something that's going to do anything but serve us. And in order to participate in that, you got to send us your email, sean at aletheamedia.com.